Hey guys, Mel the Train Shooter here again with another sort of product review come overview. And in front of me, I have a mass of sprues. And these are from the Dead Zone starter set from Mantic. Now, my mate Mike, he's a pro painter, a very good painter. He's had loads of stuff on the front of War Games Illustrated and box art and various manufacturers. But he wants to get into this. So we took a trip down to Stafford Games, an awesome place if you want to check it out. If, you, if you're in the area, and if you're in the area, give me a shout as well, because I'm only up in Stoke. But anyway, took a trip down there, We he bought, got the box set, and we're on the way back, and he decided that, he asked me if I wanted to paint one of the squads, and I was like, yeah, maybe, maybe not. And he says, well, do you want to do the train, and I'll paint the squads. Now, I said, yeah, sure, I can give, a, give it a review at the same time, and so, hence, I've ended up with, what do you call it? a shed load of sprues. Now I'm not going to do anything magical with this because Mike specifically asked me to replicate exactly what's on the box. And the reason for this is if Mike doesn't like the system then because he's a pro painter he'll just put the entire thing back in the box, put it on eBay and make a profit on it to be perfectly honest which is why he wants the terrain to be you know, as it is on the box art. So I'm building simple builds, I'm following Mantic's instructions and it should be an interesting build because theoretically this is what you you guys should be doing. So no bases, no conversions, nothing like that. Just the basic kit. And as a quick browse here, what you've got when you pull it out, and I'm sure you've seen this in other videos, but you've got these handy connectors. Yeah, and this is what you use to connect between the various watch panels. You've got the accessory sprues, okay, with various corners and ladders and supports and stuff on yeah and i'll have a look more at those as i go down yeah you can got floor and doors yeah so yeah now these are all three inch squares yeah and it works on mantic dead zones uh three inch cube basis yeah everything is three inches within the block so to speak and so you know there, there are lots of little 3d cubes Oh, cube is a 3D shape anyway. We've got some more walls, and there's this one, this one, this one, this one. Yep. And then finally, some floors, some doors, some more supports, some half panels. Okay, and it's a regional set. That it's got. A, I'm. I'm not sure if it's hardened plastic or whether there's. It's a composite resin mix, to be perfectly honest, guys, because it's got a slight feel and look to resin to it. But, I mean, it makes no difference, really. You know, you're still going to put it together the same. Yeah, and so the battle plan is I'm going to put together a couple of buildings. Yeah, and I'm going to take them off the sprue as I need them. I'm going to be putting them together with the basic push to connect method. And this set of terrain is supposed to work with these connectors that you don't need glue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to approach it first when I'm building them with the, the idea that you don't need glue. And then I'm going to let, later go in and sort of touch weld it with glue to make it a little bit more firmer. Okay, that is if Mike wants that doing, you know. So initially I'm just going to simply go and push them together and then, you know, later on I can go and sort of seal it, if you know what I mean, and, and give it a better bond. So I'm going to crack on with this now, guys. Uh, once I've got one or two buildings put together, we'll come back out and have a look, eh? Right, see you in a moment, guys. Ta! -da. Right, guys, it's the morning after. I've built most of the set now, but I thought it'd be a good idea to sort of share some advice and things I found out and things from other builds I've done that's sort of relevant and just give you a quick sort of overview of tips of putting this stuff together, yeah, to sort of, so you don't make the mistakes I've made and all that sort of stuff. Right, straight off, let's start with taking them off the sprue. Now, they come on sprues, obviously. I tend to use big clippers. Yeah, to sort of separate major pieces from sprues. So, you know, I'm not going to show you clipping sprues for God's sake. But I use big clippers to take pieces off the sprues. And then I'll use hobby clippers to sort of clean them up. Now, the guys over at Mantic have been quite clever with this stuff. Okay. And what they've done is they've put each edge is a V shape and it's got two 45 degree angles. And that's so that when you put two pieces together, they fit nicely. OK, and it doesn't matter which side you're coming from, etc. And you can link four pieces together and there'll be no problem. Now, where they've attached, where the sprue actually attaches to the pieces, what they've done is they've made it so the attachment is only on one side of that V. 
which means if you come in and cut it on the opposite side yeah like I'm doing now yeah you're left with a horrible chunk because it doesn't take the bulk off yeah if you do it hor horizontally you're left with a chunk there but if you come on the same side as the actual watch color is the the actual attachment and you clip that there these are useless but i'm using them to death okay but basically it takes the bulk off and that's going to really speed up the process okay yeah so be aware that when you come to clean the sprue bits off and you've got to clean these off otherwise it won't join together properly yeah they do need to be clipped they do need to be filed Okay, but that's the way to do it. Come in with your hobby, yeah, and go with the actual watch or orientation of the slope they're attached to. Now, when it comes to filing them, obviously, yeah, you know how to file models, but one quick tip, yeah. I find that if you go to, like, the edge of a table, yeah, so I'd have it here, but just to keep it in, in the camera, pin it, yeah, and then what you can literally do is just rub the pieces, yeah, clean up the pieces. And obviously this is a bit awkward because it's not at the edge of the table, but you get the idea. The benefit of doing it this way is you can quickly do all the pieces, flip them around, grab another one, you know, and just if you're on one of those processes of I've got to get through this, this is a bit quicker. Another good way, yeah, is just sell take some very, very fine modelling sandpaper, yeah, down to your table and literally just come along, clean it up, move on to the next one. And it is literally like that. So... That's clipping and filing and prepping the pieces. Now, the other big thing about this Mantic stuff is it's clipped together and you don't need glue. And this, this has not been glued and it is sturdy. Okay, and I'll talk about all the, the over, my overall opinions and that sort of stuff at the end of the video. But, yeah, it works with connectors. Yeah, and it comes with these corner connectors. Yeah, which are for where well, you can see the red. Yeah, connecting corners and at the top and all that sort of stuff and it comes up with the horizontal connectors and this is for connecting them horizontally with floors with walls yeah much like that one there okay now you get when you're building yeah let's be honest most of our buildings are corners yeah and initially i was quite shocked because there weren't that many corners i seem to be going through them really quickly okay but they also include lots of these and these are struts okay and they're designed to sort of like hold up where you'd have a platform coming out from there okay but there's about eight or ten of them in the pack and i found that they're perfect corners all you need to do is simply clip that bit off clip that bit off okay and they're corner pieces and you don't need that many struts unless you're doing something which requires a lot of struts obviously but don't just add these as decoration you know consider these corners and i'll talk about this in a minute but those are the basic connectors and these are spare connectors so to speak now they do also have the sort of buttresses yeah and they go on like that and they are also horizontal connectors yeah but i don't see I'm not so worried about the horizontal connectors trying to replicate the terrain on the back on the back of the box than I am about the corner ones. But discovering the struts can be used as corners as well as a big bonus. So uh, they're the pieces and that's how to prep them. OK, now let's talk about corners. OK, now, obviously, yeah, being the little genius that I am, I painted the connectors red so you can see them better. OK, and. When it comes to connecting these pieces, there's not you're always going to feel like you want more connectors to make it more sturdy. Yeah, so there's a process to go through. Go the most economical route possible first, which is one connector between each panel. Yeah, so on a three panel what corner piece like this, it's one, two, three. Yeah, and the reason for that is you can always add more later, but you need to make sure that you know you've got enough just to get the basic build together when you're placing the connectors on horizontal pieces such as this yeah always place yeah the horizontal connectors the corner pieces that are going horizontally not the ones that connect to roofs or floors yeah always place those at the bottom 
yeah because that's where you want the support the top will naturally pull itself together because of the floor connectors okay and there'll be a little bit of bowing if you push it but what you don't want is a building that splays at the bottom uh imagine that's the bottom there's no connector on imagine that's the bottom yeah do you see that you don't want that so keep those horizontal connectors at the bottom where closest to the ground yeah when it comes to the vertical connectors what you want to do is keep these connectors as far away from the corner as possible now i know i put that one there yeah but the further away further away they are the better the join and what i'll do is i'll just show you this yeah and i'll show you the difference so we're going to combine a couple of points but you'll see what i mean these two connectors here are right in the corner which means when i put this building down there's nothing supporting this end so i can do this do you see that and these bits splay out now if i remove these connectors and that's what i'm going to do now okay Well, that's what I'm going to try and do. Where's my other one? That's it. Yeah, and that one. I'll talk about this in a quick second. Yeah, but these connectors, if I remove these now, oh, come on. I'll find that later. I've got a spare one. I will find that later because I need it. Come on. Oh, that's over there. Okay, that was the tip of the file. Right, before I carry on, let's talk about these connectors. These things, yeah, are tough as hell. Okay. Uh, and what I mean by that is once they're in, they really are set and they do require some force to separate. So you've got to be careful. Yeah, don't just go charging straight ahead and put this stuff together. Because if you need to change it, yeah, you will break them. You will sort of like really struggle getting them apart, you know. And if they're glued, you've got no chance. Okay, let me go back to this quickly because I want to finish this point. Sorry, guys, I'm rambling, but it's sort of the way the video's gone. Anyway, right, these connectors, putting them in. Yeah, I'm now going to put them not there at the close point. I'm going to put them at the outside points. And I found the best way to put them in, yeah, is with a screwdriver. Okay. And this is because you can apply a lot of force directly. Yeah, I've tried with my thumb. You struggle. It, it can be a bit of a pain. Yeah, but with a screwdriver, it's just a simple matter of applying your force. And it snaps cleanly in. Sometimes they don't snap cleanly in. Sometimes they just, you know, go in. Yeah, but, you know, you'll get a nice tight fit with a screwdriver. So I'll quickly do this one. And once again, I'll turn it around so you can see what I'm doing. Now, what I've got is I'm putting the pressure directly over the chuck. Not over the piece, not in the middle piece. Literally over the piece that needs to go in, the little notch. Okay. And that one has just pushed in. Yeah, no click with that one, but it is firmly down. Is it? On quick check. Yeah, that's it. Okay. And then I'm going to put it back on this piece. Now, you notice that when you're building this stuff, yeah? Sorry if I'm off camera, guys. I do apologise. It's the kids. Everything's going on. <laughs> Blame the kids. <laughs> right, anyway. When you're building this stuff, build these sort of corner sort of walls first and then attach it to the floors. Yeah, if you try and do it the other way, you know, add a floor to a side, then add another one. It starts to get tricky. So build a logical building approach. Yeah, so this is just a matter of placing it on those bits. So, yeah, you can see that. Yeah, I've lined the chucks up. Yeah, push that one in. push that one in okay and as you can see it's a lot more sturdy now this this point is splaying I will not lie to you to be honest guys that's because I've bent them trying to get the the watch the bits out 
Okay, a little bit of plastic glue on that will sort it out fine. But with the other pieces that I did this on, you know, and the pieces where, you know, it is, the truck is away from it, it's nice and solid. Okay, guys, but I bent those, getting those bits out. Sorry, guys. But as you can see, yeah, that's where you need the support the furthest away to give you a, a solid build. Yeah. <laughs> right, so we've talked about clipping the fire in connectors, the struts, uh, the economy of using these builds, you know, put one in first before you put double in. Okay, uh, yeah, okay, let's quickly talk about what you're planning and putting aside. Talking about what you're you know, making this kit go as far as possible. Yeah, it's very easy to get carried away with building, and that's what I did with this. Okay, I got carried away, you know, it's got loads of corner pieces on. I mean, this has got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 corner pieces on. Yeah, which is a joke, you know, in hindsight. But I've glued it, so there's nothing I can do about that now. Yeah. But when you're doing your builds, consider what you call it, a process called planning and putting aside. And what it basically means is, yeah, you get your bits and you say, right, I'm going to build a cube. I'm going to need, say this is a roof, say this is a roof, and two walls, and then I'm going to need three connectors between them. Yeah, so I'm going to find, let's say that's three connectors. Yeah, I get my three connectors, okay? And then what I do is I put them in a pile, and I put them over to one side. Yeah, and I start planning my next build. And what this does is, before you even clip anything together, this makes you lets you make sure that you've got all the bits you need yeah for the builds you want okay you don't get halfway through putting this stuff together to realize oh yeah i'm a panel short or i'm two connectors short yeah by doing the, the planning and putting aside you can literally go as you go and when you run out and it starts to get difficult you can start looking at your other bits and sort of say well i can sacrifice that bit from that you know i can lose that wall from that and that'll give me the bits to finish this other one and they're all my bits and then you can go ahead and build in them if you're planning on doing a absolutely massive build and you got a lot of these sprues then do post-it notes and do a quick sketch a block sketch of what you're planning on doing throw it in a little plastic bag you know we've all got plastic bags or you know jiffy bags food bags sandwich bags throw in one of those with the bits and put it to the side the same with bigger builds you know i plan on doing this three-story thing sketch it out put all your bits together put it to the side yeah, one, it gives you a way with the bigger builds of not being overwhelmed by this sea of sprues and the sea of bits that you've got to create. Instead, it becomes lots of little mini projects and you can share them out and that sort of things with your friends. It's a lot easier to figure out that you've got the stuff from, you know, the, that sacrificing side. And it makes these sort of builds go a lot better. So that's planning and putting aside. OK, so that's just a sort of like a process for putting this stuff together and putting kits together in general that are multi part and multi modular. So, guys, that's plan and put aside. We've virtually covered everything now. I have covered. Yeah, I've covered how to push them in and I've covered how to pop them out with a point and you've seen the forces involved. Uh, the last thing to sort of talk about is gluing. OK, now you can glue these pieces. Now, what I'd recommend is dry fit them with the connectors first and then glue them afterwards yeah because that way you can be 100 percent sure they're right once you glue these pieces they were indestructible <laughs> did i not glue those bits then so ah i only glued these ones down here because this one broke when i was moving it sweet can rescue these i've got some more connectors yeah but this glue bit is really solid guys absolutely solid Put it across there. No, I'm not going to put it together. I just want to finish off with gluing. Right, I am rambling. Right, gluing. Yeah, basic, what do you call it, plastic glue works absolutely fine on this stuff. And what I like to use is one of these hobby ones. Now, who's this? Is this Humbro? Or Contactor it is. Yeah, but very, very fine, what do you call it, sort of metal tube as an applicator which means you can literally just come along and say right i'm just going to run a bit down here yeah and you can literally just quickly 
yeah we're on a very thin application yeah and if I bring it up yeah you can see it shining it's going nowhere you don't have those floods with that so you know when you're using uh, plastic glue and you squeeze some out or you're using the brush technique and you're trying to keep it off this is a precision applicator it was only two pound yeah and obviously it's a small bottle but there's no reason why you can't take the top off and top it up guys you know what I mean this is you know I bought this for the applicator not the contents I can always top the contents up it's also handy having a thin bit of brass wire with this oh here's the wife oh <laughs> it's okay babe it's also handy handy having a little bit of thin brass wire with this because sometimes if it gets clogged you can pull it out you can pull the tube out the applicator you can even replace the tube if you've got thin tube enough but a little brass watch call it rod that you can just push down that hole and just clear any blockages out yeah I normally have one and it's normally sort of like blue tacked there all oh, the kids are showing upstairs right anyway let me wind this up so that's basically gluing it and once that dries that will hold it solid you don't need to sort of force your way into this gap okay that will seal that gap won't separate it'll be brilliant so that's it guys that's what I've sort of picked up and that's sort of tips for putting this together what I'm gonna do now is put this back together work on this and I'm gonna carry on replicating you know the various dead zone terrain bits yeah because as I said Mike wants it exactly as it is on the back of the box art yeah you, she's sneaking through go on go on can you be quiet and there's a there's a child at the, at the door it's gonna get loud so guys I'm moving on and carrying on with building this. I'll speak to you in a minute when it's all built and I'll give you my final impressions. See you in a, mech in a second, guys. So, guys, that's it all completed and I've got quite a collection of buildings here. Now, remember, I went off the actual box image at the back and I'll talk about that in a minute. But, first off, yeah, I put them all together and I think it's important that I go through the niggles. Okay, now you've seen, me, you've seen the tips on how to put it together. This is sort of the things that I've spotted as we've gone along. Now, these bits are all great, you know, I've had some great fun putting them together. But these struts, okay, they're not, they're, they're a little bit off. And I'm not sure where whether it's, you know, this plastic sort of mounting here or there seem to be a slight twist. But basically, they're going to be a bit fiddly, okay. It's not a major problem, but if you know about it in, in advance, then you can sort of plan ahead and make sure you dry fit it properly and make sure you're completely happy before you put any glue anywhere near it so be aware of those struts uh, it, the kit comes with a collection of containers yeah and these are off the sprue these were the only two that needed gluing which are two crates and the interesting thing is they're not actually square yeah they're actually like a diamond okay and it sort of threw me quite late at night you know I was sitting there I've glued the right ends together and that sort of stuff but no they are actually slightly diamond I mean it's not a problem it's cool you know just be aware they are diamond so if you put them together you haven't put them together wrong don't worry guys then you've got the these solid containers now there's a slight issue with shrinkage on the back of these and I don't know if you can see it but basically when you get solid blocks of plastic when they cool after coming out of the mold they shrink a bit where they're where they're quite bulky and you can get it on vehicle panels and stuff like that and he, you can see it if you know what you're looking for but with these being quite chunky the, the back of these have just sunk in a bit and it's the same on the other set I've got yeah and there's a little bit shrinkage on these now it's minuscule but I'm just saying it's there be aware of it okay now the next one the fences now these fences that come with the kit they're a bit of an oddity okay and the reason I say that is that if I bring this one up okay you can see how they sit on top of the, the pieces now, the thing is they're not modular and by that they don't fit what you call it sort of next to each other you can't do corner pieces of these they sort of overlap and it's the only bit in the kit that overlaps and doesn't sort of go together properly yeah so you need to be aware of it obviously a little bit of clipping a little bit of fire then it's fine but when you're doing your planning and putting aside yeah be aware that if you want to put these on a corner then there's going to be extra work to do to sort of make them fit okay guys now finally the lamp posts yeah and these sort of these sort of surprised me okay obviously I was following the picture at the back of the watch call it 
the back of the box art and they're not on them and i just naturally assumed that oh they're standing terrain they're scattered terrain you know and i didn't look at them until i built all the buildings because i'm sort of doing it piecemeal rather than going through everything and then what i realized was when i started looking at them is they've actually got a horizontal connector here which means the way these things are held up is by connecting them between two panels, two horizontal panels. Now I've only got two horizontal panels on here, and that's these two, and this has got a buttress on, so I can't put them on there. Yeah, so this is another planning and putting aside. You need to decide where these are going in advance. Okay, guys? I mean, I suppose you could put them on a corner. You know, that might work. Okay, my actual idea, and I'm gonna share it with Mike when he comes later, is what you call it i should take one of these buttresses off here sort of have them sort of let me see if one of these will pop out easily i haven't glued these ever please i'm not going to risk forcing them or anything like that but basically pop one of these out put it in and then turn the light round the other way to, to sort of reduce the the footprint of it but be aware with the lamp posts yeah that you're going to have to watch call it you're going to have to sort of plan ahead with these otherwise you'll end up with nowhere to put them or put them in weird places because you've forgotten about them so they're the sort of niggles now none of those are deal breakers you know there's nothing that's an issue this is a wonderful kit but this is where it changes slightly in a light-hearted manner but where are you mantic let me look in you let me look at you in the eyes when i accuse you of this Dear Mantic, I, the terrain shooter, are calling shenanigans on you. Shenanigans, I say. Now, have a look at this picture, yeah, of the box art and the picture of the, what I got from their website. Yeah, and when you look at it, have a look at how many floor tiles there are. Okay? See that? Seven. There's only six floor tiles in the set, guys. Naughty, naughty, naughty. No, seriously, that really sort of threw me because I was building it along and, you know, I'd just gone, I looked at the picture. I sort of said, right, I'll just build it along and I'll make this up just as it is, you know, and then it's like, I'm getting near the end and I'm like, hey, just a minute. I'm a little bit confused here. Okay. So, yeah, there are actually seven floor tiles. So, you're going to need to get to be a bit creative. Now, I've done that. There's another bit on the picture, yeah? And if you look at the gantry element, yeah? And I am calling proper shenanigans on Mantric now. This is cheeky, yeah? With the gantry element, what you've got is you've got sort of half cube builds, but they've got the full square on them, okay? And I've just seen my mum turn up with the kids, so I'm expecting loads of noise come through that door any minute, guys. Yeah, so let's see if we can wind this up before they come through, eh? You've got the, the half, watch you've got the half pieces, but they've got full four floor tiles on them. Yeah, so you've got these half pieces, yeah, with the gantries, but the back of them is the full floor tile. Now, these bits don't go in the middle of the full floor tile. So how have you done that? I mean, you must have had to cut it down or something because there's no clip holes, you know. There's no guiding rods or anything like that. So I am Mantric. I'm calling shenanigans on you, sir. One for the box art, two for the what you call it. Two for the iffy bit of crafting to get that gantry off, yeah. Now, guys, very quickly, I'll go camera down. Yeah, just because I can literally in me one coming. <laughs> yeah, you can do it. You can replicate it. You can make the set with all the bits that are in there i've done it with spare buttresses and all that sort of stuff left over yeah you just need to be, get a little bit creative yeah it's put planning and putting aside guys you know what i mean that's all it is now i've done these mantra kits they are empty at the back yeah because you really need to maximize the panels but from what i've heard of the game that works fine you know they don't have to be solid uh finally i've got to say i really do love this stuff it's really good fun. Yeah, once you get your head around the knack to putting it together and everything, it really is a blast. Yeah, uh, it's a shame that I'm probably never going to see any of this again. Yeah, I'd love to, you know, I had an awesome build for like a Necromunda sort of table with columns and everything. But I'm never going to see this sort of stuff again. 
to be perfectly honest, you know, the hobby fund doesn't sort of cover it and, you know, I need other things first before I can spend on this. This is going to have to be one of those if I win the lottery tables. <laughs> but in the meantime, yeah, I've got Mike coming over in just a little while. Yeah, to bring over some miniatures, have a look and, you know, decide on colour schemes and everything. And it's gaming night, so we're probably going to be gaming with it anyway, which is why I wanted to get it finished. So you may see some shots of that on my Google Plus and everything. What I've got to say is Mantic, brilliant kit, guys. A couple of little niggles, but no deal breakers. Overall, really, really pleased with it, even with your shenanigans. So, guys, uh... If you want to see it painted, that'll be coming up relatively soon because I want to get this done for Mike relatively soon. Uh, in the meantime, there's more tutorials coming. Obviously, like it if you like it. Uh, share it with your mates. Uh, if you're new to the channel and you've not seen this sort of stuff, click the subscribe. It's there. It's there. And if I haven't got us, if you're not watching on a view with annotations, I'm looking like an idiot. But you know how to subscribe. Anyway, guys, my kids are back. Uh, it's a cracking day. I've got the grass to cut and yeah, it's slightly off because I'm not wiggling. <laughs> See you later, guys. All the best. Ta-da.